So um, a lot of you from what um, you know, I can see from some of the initial sign up or from early stage um, companies. And I wanted to maybe provide some context as to um, where the market currently is and what VCs are actually asking when they're asking you about, um, you know, go to market proof point and traction, right? So there's a, there, there's a couple um, things that are happening in, in the space right now. So we, this, this slide is actually from our annual um, summit that we actually did last year uh, or just last week uh, for our LPs, where at a high level, there's a couple things happening. One is that, um, as you guys know, the fundraising activity is really not where it used to be in 2021, right? So if you kind of look at the peak of 2021, we've, we've effectively gone from that as the peak to total round raise falling about 64% and total dollars raised are as well um, down about 86% from, from that peak. Meaning that we're not in an environment where capital is easily available, right? Um, and that's also um, showing up in um, how long it's currently taking in order for um, folks to fundraise as well. So there's a couple ways this impacts um, the go-to-market question when you're thinking about the early stage. One, it means that it's going to take a little longer for you guys to be able to get to the proof points that you need to get to. And also it's going to take longer for um, you guys to fundraise, meaning that financial discipline and really looking at prioritizing customers becomes super, super important. And I'll expand on that a little bit later. And two, uh, what that also means is that what you need to show in terms of proof points um, to, to VCs is actually a little bit different. So at a high level, um, as I mentioned, we've got, um, we write about a hundred checks a year, which means that at any point in time, we'll probably have a dozen or so companies that are going out to fundraise. And here's kind of what we're seeing in the current uh, market environment. It used to be that a pre-seed round would be raised with a pitch deck and a solid team. The goalpost has moved a little bit. It's almost similar to uh, where a seed round used to be a couple of years ago, where now, um, even at the pre-seed stage, folks want to see some revenue. They want to see um, that you've got to build product and they want to see some initial design partners or first users. At the seed stage, what we're seeing is that um, now they want to see um, some of your early customers and some early signs of repeatability when it comes to your go-to-market motions as well. So depending on the vertical, sometimes we're seeing um, VCs ask for about 200K in, in revenue. Um, some ask, are asking for more, some are asking for less, but the general idea and the general thing to think about is that it used to be that you could um, fundraise um, with design partners at this each stage. That's no longer um, true for a lot of um, different verticals, maybe at the exception of generative AI. Um, but generally speaking, VCs do want to see your early customers getting, um, you know, value from your product before you can, uh, before you can even write a C round, right? We won't touch on, on, on Series A just yet, but what does that mean? That means that um, it really goes back to um, some of the fundament fundamentals of really making sure that you're showing um, what needs to be true from a go-to-market standpoint um, and also showing that initial repeatability and, and, and in, in your motion. So I'm, I'm sharing, I'll share this slide a little bit um, broadly later so you guys have this. So the point is not for, um, you know, to, to focus on, specific um, points um, here, but at a high level, just to kind of give you guys a sense, I think of, and when I used to kind of run things at Hootsuite as well, at a high level, this is how I thought about, um, you know, go to market and it, and it really goes in, in three phases. There's a phase where you're just really making sure that your solution will address the pain point and that the pain point is real, right? So that's where most of you are now, um, and generally that motion is founder-led. Generally, um, you're below that um, that um, 200K mark or below that million-dollar mark. Um, and really the motion here is that you're 
working with early adopters and really starting to convert some of those early design partners. And most most of the time, folks are at this stage when and when we start working with them at form. But then there's the the motion where um, you've got some initial customers, maybe you've got five, six design partners that are starting to convert. And now you're thinking about how do we scale this? How do we build um, you know, a, a repeatable motion that will enable us to get to about a million dollars and, and above? And generally speaking, this is where the first mistake comes when it comes to go to market. You generally don't want to scale until you have some notion of repeatability with at least one motion. Again, I'll expand on it. But at a high level, what VCs want to see and what VCs mean when they're asking you about um, go to market and really uh, proof points of repeatability, they want to be able to see that you've really nailed at least one prospecting motion with one ICP and you're able to demonstrably and measurably show um, proof points and success um, with, with those customers and those customers are already paying you, right? So that's that's in a nutshell kind of where we're at um, today. What that means in terms of um, initial um, go-to-market is that I have this notion of, I kind of think of it as, uh, and again, I'll share uh, a lot of these metrics um, with you guys. It's not so much, the point wasn't so much to show it to you, but to kind of give you guys an idea. There's a set of things that VCs will look at depending on the motion that you're that you're in to really um, see those in initial signals of repeatability, right? So when you look at um, you know sales, when you're looking for product market fit in this in this leftmost column to um, that middle column, you're probably asking yourself, when do you know that you are in kind of column number two? And I think of it as um, minimum viable metrics, um, so to speak. So there's a few things that need to be true to kind of start giving you a sense um, that you're onto something. And um, really, you know, you can look at your leads and figure out whether your messaging is um, generating um, repeatable um, pipeline or inbound leads, as an example, right? There's a bunch of things that you can look at in terms of the unit economics as well. Does your average contract value match the sales cycle? Is your win rate where it needs to be? Is the sales cycle lens where, where it needs to be? So these are just little metrics that you can kind of take a look at. Um, to really validate or at least get an initial sense that things are going in the right direction. And um, the idea is not for you guys to um, be here on every single metric, but think of it as the more of these metrics you've got um, proven out and the more of these metrics are in line with um, what, what good looks like, the better off um, you will be when it comes to um, really showing um, that repeatability. So at a high level, really just kind of highlighting Things have changed um, in the current environment. You do need to show revenue these days um, in order to fundraise, even at the pre-seed level, meaning that at the seed stage with your initial customers, VCs will also want to have a pretty clear answer on your go-to-market motion and what needs to be true in order for you guys to get to the next round. Meaning at the seed stage, you have to really show how you're gonna get to that million, $2 million AR mark. Um, and we're back to um, basics as well, where long term folks are going to want to really get conviction that this is a business that can get to 10, 50, 100 million in AR as well.